So I have always wanted to understand how hierarchical clustering works. And what better way to understand an algorithm than to read well-written code and write a clone yourself, which I actually did. So in the past couple of days, I've been reading the project R code, which implements a big O of N square agglomerative hierarchical clustering algorithm. And I'll explain the key part in full detail. Hierarchical clustering is a process by which a collection of items are organized into a tree structure reflecting their similarities and dissimilarities. The objects can be numbers, tuples, strings, and images, or documents, and the dissimilarity function can be anything that faithfully identifies close pairs. You can get the subgroups at any level you want, and even if you didn't want that, you can easily grasp the organization of the distribution. R provides a handful of functions related to hierarchical clustering, and the most technically curious part is of course the hierarchical clustering itself. In the original version, the hclust function takes as arguments the dissimilarity matrix from the dist function, and also you can choose from seven different types of estimators as emerge members. The source we are looking for is in library stats. In each directory, R houses the R interface, while SRC houses external source, which are in C or Fortran. The piece we are looking at today is in Fortran, in old Fortran. So, the overall algorithm goes like this. We organize n items by performing n-1 merges. In each round, we know which one to merge by keeping a record of nearest neighbor for each cluster and picking up the nearest pair at each round. Another interesting thing that I noticed is that by defining that merges only occur toward lower index, we can save some CPU time in maintaining that neighbor list. So let's start on the code. I'll start with the roles of each variable, excluding those small variables which are reused for different roles in different parts of the program. So n is the number of items, obviously, len the size of the dissimilarity matrix, which didn't really have to be a parameter. I opt from 1 to 7, the choice of method, I A, I B, and crit. These are the outputs of this program. Their sizes are declared to be n, but only the first n-1 rows will be used to record which two clusters are merged and at what price. Member is the number of members, flag could be called alive, and nn or disnn hold the indices of nearest neighbor and the dissimilarities to them. And finally, the dissimilarity matrix itself. Some of these, especially nn, disnn, and flag, these are generated and used internally, but they still made it into the parameter list because the author wanted this program to be able to take interruption and continue from a second function call. I never tried it. So after a loose definition of infinity, we start by filling flags with trues and members with one. Oh, the flag is overwritten. Resuming won't work. Down there, by the way, NCL is the main iterable, which counts the n-1 mergers, and then we initialize the nearest neighbor list. In this process, because we have defined that only lower index item eats higher index item, for each i, we only have to find the closest item j among the later items, because only they are the potential preys. Wait a minute, will it work? Because b being closest to a does not mean a being closest to b. Yes, it's okay, because the minimum distance is unique, and both party knows the same distance. We just have to keep only one of them. The initialization is over, and we find the opening of the main loop. I'm not a Fortran expert, but I'm sure continue is pretty much like no op. But they do have for loops, so why don't they put a for loop with ncl here? Well, it's initiated up there, and it's decremented down there. That's their coding style. So, first thing in the loop is to identify the closest pair, which of course must occur among the nearest neighbor list we are maintaining. So they get married right away, which begins by aliasing their indices to i2 and j2, ensuring j2 is greater, then registering their union in ia, ib, and crit, and declaring j2 as dead. 
Observe, by the way, members isn't updated yet because the old value is used in updating the dissimilarity matrix. Two clusters are gone and one new cluster has come. The new cluster is indexed by I2 and thus all dissimilarities between I2 and all alive members, except I2 itself of course, need to be updated. But the formula that determine these distances refer to the very values we are invalidating, which are the three distances. Then comes the collection of seven functions, which depend on up to six parameters, which includes the three dissimilarities with just alias and the number of members in the couple and the third party. When you try to interpret these, consider that they are applied repeatedly. For example, the complete link method is saying that the third party to the merged cluster is separated by the maximax distance. The other extreme, of course, is the single link, and maybe we can consider the rest as sort of weighted averages between the two using the number of members. In case you want to pause and have a good look, I'll count two. One, two. Okay, during this work, the nearest neighbor of I2, the new complex, is being determined via the variables dmin and jj. What humorous names. Furthermore, this conditional clause is fused with subtly different work of updating the nearest neighbor of k, the third party, or not. The actual role of this part is to make k subject to a nearest neighbor check, which occurs in a separate loop. So after updating the dissimilarity matrix is over, we finally update the nearest neighbor of those whose nearest neighbor had been i2 or j2, which no longer exist. Although this is a nested loop, in the context of the main loop, the outer loop of this part has a constant expected number of iterations, hence rendering the whole algorithm still big O of n square. And this is the end of h cluster. To make sure that I've understood this algorithm correctly, I've written my own C++ clone. This allows me to use float instead of double, and also let me store the dissimilarity matrix on disk, on database, on network, whatever. There is some remaining work actually after determining all the n-1 merges, but that's material for another video. Thanks for watching and let's please write clean code.